In theory, how many refugees who are currently at risk in the Mediterranean would Scotland be prepared to take? Well, we've already argued, the Scottish Government's already argued that Britain should play its part uh, and, uh, and take in and be part of the European effort to find homes for these people. How big a part, though? Well, a, a fair share along with the other European countries, uh, as opposed to virtually saying we're going to opt out of that. So the full 60,000, well, you in Scotland, if you were able to, would be prepared to give a home we'll, to? We should take our fair share as a country of Britain, and Scotland certainly advocates that, uh, and uh, I'm quite certain the Scottish Government will continue to, to push very hard for that. Can I just say, I think the, the UK Government in general, Theresa May in particular, is hopelessly misjudging this issue. I, I can think of very few people in Scotland, and I think very few people in England either, who would want to turn away people in total extremity, given the scenes that we've all witnessed in our televisions over the last two or three months. Uh, and where are these people to go if they're not settled? Can they all be returned? Doesn't seem likely. But and they can't stay in the hold of a warship in the middle of the Mediterranean for any great length of time. So Britain must play its full part. Scotland... But you won't say it. how big a part. You won't say whether the, the full 60,000. Well, I think Britain should take the full 60,000, and Scotland is certainly willing to take our proportionate share, and we would argue for that. And you don't think, as the Conservatives argue, that people are worried about the impact on public services? No, I, I think people... I think most people are human beings, and when they see people in their extremity want to do something to help and I think a government which doesn't understand that basic human instinct of the Scottish people and indeed the English people it isn't uh, the sort of government that uh, represents people properly. Clearly there's a great deal of politics at work mm. here with the, the Conservatives picking a fight uh, with Europe yeah. on this very early in the government. Um, the mood music also is for an earlier EU referendum, in-out referendum. Mm -hmm. Do you welcome that? Do you say bring it on? I don't agree there should be a, a referendum, and I don't agree with the negotiating tactic. I held a referendum in Scotland about Scottish independence. And that, yet you deny people to say on no, Europe? Well, can I just explain the difference? I, I did that because I wanted Scotland to be independent, and I wanted a, a mandate from the Scottish people. But David Cameron is asking for a European referendum when we all know he doesn't want to withdraw from the European Union. He wants to, to stay in. So the, this extraordinary position of a Prime Minister arguing for a referendum, which he wants to argue for a yes vote in, is where the, the confusion and I, I think a lot of the damage is going to come from over the next two years. But is there, isn't the fact that you're sort of slightly lukewarm on, on having a referendum at all mm. and settling this debate once and for all, is that it might bounce you into an earlier second referendum on Scotland than you would like? You currently don't have the votes to, to win that. Well, actually, for all the reasons I, I, I thought of for opposing the, the European referendum, that one has actually never occurred to me. I mean, it may have occurred to Nicola, Nicola Sturgeon, but, I mean, but, uh, but uh, I don't so think so. I, I don't think that's a reason at all. I mean, as Nicola has said on a number of occasions, the timing of a, a new referendum in Scotland will be determined ultimately by the Scottish people. Uh, and I've got the fantastic ability now to look interviewers like yourself straight in the eye when you ask me when's that going to be and say, that's a matter for Nicola Sturgeon. So if, um, if Europe, uh, if UK votes to leave Europe, that would trigger a, a, a second Scottish referendum, you've made that clear. If the government goes ahead with its plans to scrap the Human Rights Act, should that also trigger a well, second Scotland referendum? What, what Nicholas said is if you had a situation where Scotland was dragged out of the European Union against the will of the Scottish people, then that would be a fundamental change in circumstances. And she's also proposed a solution, which is to have the, the lock that all the component nations would have to agree to withdraw before a withdrawal could be effective. So there's a proposal to safeguard the interests of all of these equal partners in this but, United Kingdom, as David Cameron used to describe but it. But it's scrapping the, the Human Rights well, Act the also human rights, another trigger? I, I, well, I don't think they're going to manage it because they'll need legislative consent from the Scottish Parliament to do away with the, uh, the Strasbourg Court and, uh, and its providence. We support the Human Rights Act because we like people being able to sue governments against things like the bedroom tax and have basic human rights that we should not be frightened of. So I don't think the Scottish Parliament, under the Scottish National Party, has any chance whatsoever of giving legislative consent to such a, an insane proposal. Final very quick one. Have you ever received a letter from Prince Charles on Scottish government policy? Yes. Many? Quite a few. Oh, very good. Of... Well, I thought they were excellent. I thought they were... Prince Charles's letters, in my opinion, are are on subjects uh, he knows quite a bit about, and in the main I found them uh, very intelligent and always worth reading.